The engine you see here is 60 years old. I made it in 1964. It was my second attempt, successful attempt, at making a model Sterling engine. The first being the 1961 engine from Popular Science. Uh, that one worked very well and I ended up giving it to a friend. Then I worked on this one. You can see here how little this engine is. It's still looking pretty clean after all these years. Of course, I kept it in a pickle jar most of the time. This is uh, pretty much the way the engine looked when it was first made, except it's got a larger flywheel now, which I made sometime later. This is the actual drawing from which I worked in making this engine. I made the drawing twice actual size to scale in pencil on just plain white paper. As I went along making the parts, I made sketches of the various parts, having the dimensions I needed to follow in making those parts. The displacer cylinder was machined from three-quarter inch diameter solid steel, the free machining variety. The end is threaded 40 TPI, I think, to screw into the brass standard. The displacer is about a half inch in diameter, hollow aluminum, and its stroke is also a half inch. The power piston is th th about three-eighths diameter with the same stroke, three-eighths. Its cylinder is, is steel, again, lapped to a nice, fine internal finish. The piston is made of brass, which has held up very well over all these years. The displacer connecting rod is forked, as you can see in the photo, so that some of the side loading on the displacer rod, which is 1 16th diameter, occurs directly over or close to the gland. The connecting rod is machined from aluminum and fitted with uh, brass bushings. The main shaft is 8th inch diameter drill rod running in plain brass bearings. Having a vertical stance, I intended to fire the engine with some sort of gas burner, but I never really made a special one just for that engine. I usually just ran it on a little torch or a cigarette lighter or held the engine over an alcohol flame, whatever was at hand. But for many, many years, this little engine, the 1964, that's the name I've given it now, um, did not have its own proper burner. Eventually, the idea occurred to attach a copper conductor to the hot end, which extended far enough from the engine to set an alcohol burner below it to heat it. It was hoped that the good conductivity of the copper would carry enough heat over to the hot end of the engine to run it in an acceptable manner. And indeed it does, as will be seen later in the video when the engine is set to running. Over this was attached a hood or a shield of light stainless steel to capture more of the flame's energy. And here is 1964 as she appears today in 2024, complete with her own burner and heating system. The alcohol burner for the engine holds about 4 cc's of alcohol, burns for about 15 minutes. It takes 3 minutes for the engine to warm up because of that large mass of copper, and then she runs for 12 minutes and then another two minutes while she cools down to a stop. The engine is not at all this noisy. I just turned the volume up to give an indication of the speed of the engine.
Here is the engine set up to drive a small fan. The engine has just been started and will pick up speed as she gradually warms up. She's warmer and running faster now. And now fully warmed up, she's going at a really nice clip. With her new burner and heater head and proper base, 1964 won't fit into the old pickle jar anymore. So we'll have to find something better in which to keep her.